Hello. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our study, our devotion time, our prayer time. This go around, we're in the Psalms, and today we are in Psalm 103. <laughs> Good morning, Caitlin. Hello. Um, this Psalm has some surprises in it, some very current words, especially for those of us who come on here every day. I think you'll hear something from the Lord if I know your stories at all. And for those of you who are joining us new, we welcome you and we want to say this is a safe place where you can grow in the Lord and learn like I'm learning how to trust him. Um, we have a really wonderful community of women right now. Men have been on here before in the past in previous books, but right now it seems to be mostly women. Um, <clears throat> but everyone that joins us um, is seeking to deepen their understanding of their relationship with the one who created them and they're learning how to pray. I love to hear you guys pray. That's why I look forward to meeting with you through Zoom. Hi, good morning, Marie. I, I love looking uh, directly at your faces and not just staring at my own. <laughs> So we'll do that again. We do that. We try to do that every, I try to do it once a month. We don't do it that often, but I will try again. Um, all right. So good morning, Gail. All right. So we're going to get started here in Psalm 102. Oops. I have the message translation. And I'll start reading, and it's a quite a much longer psalm than what we've been reading. So we'll read all the way through, then we'll come back to some points that really stuck out to me. God, or um, this is a prayer of those of, let's see, this is a prayer of one whose life is falling to pieces and who lets God know just how it is. This print is so small. Forgive me if I stumble a bit. This, this Bible is small. <laughs> okay. God, listen. Listen to my prayer. Listen to the pain in my cries. Gosh. The lighting in here, too. Let me see if I can use my flashlight. Don't turn your back on me just when I need you so desperately. Pay attention. This is a cry for help and hurry. This cannot wait. I'm wasting away to nothing. I'm burning up with fever. I'm a ghost of my former self, half consumed already by terminal illness. My jaws ache from gritting my teeth. I'm nothing but skin and bones. I'm like a buzzard in the desert, a crow perched on the rubble, an insomniac. I twitter away, mournful as a sparrow in the gutter. All day long, my enemies taunt me, while others just curse. They bring in meals, <laughs> casseroles of dishes, of ashes, sorry. I, dr I draw drink from a barrel of my tears, and all because of your furious anger. You swept me up and threw me out. There's nothing left of me, a withered weed swept clean from the path. Yet you, God, are sovereign still, always and ever sovereign. You'll get up from your throne and help Zion. It's time for compassionate help. Oh, how your servants love this city's rubble and weep with compassion over its dust. The godless nations will sit up and take notice. See your glory and worship your name. When God rebuilds Zion, 
when he shows up in all of his glory, <clears throat> when he attends to the prayer of the wretched, he will not dismiss their prayer. Write this down for the next generation. So people not yet born will praise God. God looked out from his high holy place. From heaven he surveyed the earth. He listened to the groans of the doomed. He opened the doors of their death cells. Write it so the story can be told in Zion. So God's praise will be sung in Jerusalem's streets. And wherever people gather together, along with their rulers to worship him. God sovereignly brought me to my knees. He cut me down in my prime. Oh, don't, I prayed, please don't let me die. You have more years, God, than you know what to do with. You had earth's foundations a long time ago and handcrafted the very heavens. You'll still be around when they are long gone, <clears throat> threadbare and discarded like an old suit of clothes. You'll throw them away like a worn out coat. But year after year, you're as good as new. Your servants' children will have a good place to live and their children will be at home with you. Okay, well, there's a few different sections in here of Psalm 102. And um, so <laughs> I'm not sure where I want to start today, but I do want to say thank you for praying for us yesterday and in the night. Um, and when I did uh, read in this first couple of verses about God listen to my prayers and listen to the pain in my cries, we were really dealing with some pain here with one of my kids. And I thank you for lifting us up. I thank you for, um, thank you for the Lord's turnaround and the um, help that we were able to get and I'm just really rejoicing that it's 48 hours or so or less and we've gone from tremendous pain to um, you know hearing my daughter laugh last night with her boyfriend here and then just having a good time and um, as she went to bed last night, I said, my goodness, it's a different night, isn't it? And she said, yeah, I feel so different, Mom. So I'm so grateful for the Lord to intervene. Thank you. And then I just wanted to give a shout out to any of these um, verses. I thought of my sister here. Um, she's been having some tooth pain and jaw pain and I just want to say that the Lord is thinking of you this morning and I thanked him when I woke up about how he's going to heal that um, the psalmist says here's my jaw my jaw is aching from gritting my teeth and how um, God has seen you and he is going to heal all of that and we are trusting him or very little more um, in that area of your mouth or mine. And, you know, I told you many times I've been to the dentist so many times this last year um, and never had that before in my life. So we just, I just, and Caitlin too, I just want to say that our teeth and our mouths and our gums and our jaws belong to the Lord. And I am just declaring over you and over myself this morning that there is a miracle for us in that place in our bodies, in Jesus' name. And it's because of the word here from the, the psalm. Um, and I believe that the Lord wants to heal us. And so um, the 
The other thing I wanted to point out this morning was something that I read in a commentary when I was going over this psalm. It really opened my eyes to something that I'd never thought of before. And, I'm really, and Spurgeon did it. Good old Spurgeon. He's the one that helped me see this. Um, but I just wanted to read something to you that meant so much to me. It's um, <clears throat> regarding Psalms uh, 1 through 11. And I'm going to read a portion of that again in the message where we just were reading. Um, so, um, my jaws are aching from gritting my teeth. I'm nothing but skin and bones. I'm like a buzzard in the desert, a cow perched on the rubble, I'm sorry, a crow perched on the rubble. Insomniac, I twitter away, mournful as a sparrow in the gutter. All day long, my enemies taunt me while others just curse. They bring in meals that are casseroles of ashes. I drink from a barrel of my tears and all because of your furious anger. You swept me up and drew me away. There's nothing left of me. A withered weed swept clean from the path. And so I just wanted to um, say that, um, well, I'm going to read this from this commentary, and then I'm going to tell you what I'm going to say, because I really have, I think, a word for us. It says, your servants take pleasure in pleasure in her stones. Now, so the psalmist is talking about Zion being in rubble. Your servants take pleasure in her stones. It is in our nature to reject that which is broken or torn down. But God's servants have a love that goes beyond human nature. And they see a ruined city. Come here with me now if you can get what I'm trying to say. They see a ruined city and they take pleasure in her stones and show favor to her dust. There's a looking beyond the, the rubble and the dust that God has planted in us as his servants. There's a love for a city or a people or a nation um, that doesn't come naturally to us. The psalmist was overwhelmed by a sense of his own ruin and his own need, yet he did not allow that to turn him completely inward he also cared for his community that was in ruins and in rubble. When the people of God cease to thinking about themselves so much and begin thinking about the state of things around them, particularly our cities and those who are suffering in them, then God may indeed hear our prayers and send a revival. So the, um, the commentator is talking about not looking inward, but beginning to look outward, even, even as we um, are ourselves suffering or having a difficult time or in a difficult season, we still need to recognize those who are around us who still don't even know him and don't know where to turn. And um, the state of our nation that's why we don't stop praying for the mercy of the Lord to come into the into our situation. Okay, so here's the part from Spurgeon that was interjected in a paragraph that I had to pull out and steal and read to you this morning that helped me so much have a different perspective. He says, if every stone of God's city was precious to his servants, okay, so imagine a stoned city the walls around it built with stones. He said, if every stone of God's city was precious to his servants, then by analogy, so is every stone representing the people of God in his great building, which comes from 1 Peter 2, 5, then this. The poorest church member, the most grievous backslider, the most ignorant new convert should be precious in our sight because they form a part without possibly 
sorry, my phone went dark, a very feeble part of the new Jerus Jerusalem. <clears throat> now here's what I got. Here's what really woke me up. Those three examples listed there, they are the body of Christ as well. I don't think I've ever thought of it this way. I have heard people say that the Lord is coming back for a bride that is ready. And that is scriptural. That is true. And that he's making his bride ready. But I haven't thought about the most feeble ones. And what gripped me was when he said, the most grievous backslider. Oh, when I read that, and I realized that they are one of the stones, possibly that is crushed, plummeted, rolled over on the ground. They are part of Zion. They are part of the new Jerusalem. They are a part of the church. They are wounded. They are, as the psalmist was de describing of himself, they're out of breath. They, they're in pain. They're gritting their teeth at night. They're um, crying. They're drinking buckets of tears. Um, the, the poorest one, the one who, who is maybe homeless. Do you know how many people I encounter when I go feed the homeless that I know just by one sentence they say to me that they're absolutely a believer and a child of God and they're on the streets. So the, the poorest of the poor, the most grievous backslider and the newest one who just the night before was, was doing drugs, this makes up the body of Christ. This makes up the stones of God's city that, were, that are precious and that have to be precious to us. We cannot forget all of those people that are not inside of our church walls right now. We cannot um, disregard them. They form a part. Maybe, perhaps it's a very feeble part of the New Jerusalem. Who are these ones? Who are they? Where are they in your sphere of influence? And what does God say about them? I have to take my daughter to school. So I'm going to pray into this one part of this word, and then I will have to go. Lord Jesus, I'm humbled by this word because you helped me to see that these people who are these feeble, broken stones of the walls in the city of the New Jerusalem and the body of Christ are indeed there. And a handful of them are in our sphere of influence. And how, O oh Lord, do we treat them? May we treat them with honor and respect and come into their presence with a, a sure word today, a good word from the Lord. May we know who we are. May we understand where we have come from. May we understand what you have pulled us out of as well. And may we be willing to sit as Heidi Baker so poignantly demonstrates. May we, we, may we be willing to sit in the dust, in the mud with the one and stop for the one. And may you ever keep us mindful that the body of Christ is in the, in the walls of the church by choice and by obedience, and some are without the walls 
of the church as we know it. And um, they are seen by you. They are loved by you. They are valued by you. And today or tomorrow or the next day, if we should encounter one, we ask that you give us a deep respect in our hearts, a deep love, and a deep knowing that you indeed have a shoring up for them and a, a new way of thinking for us. Now go with us today and love on us hard, Lord. Give us everything we need for life and godliness. At our fingertips, help us to access everything that we will need to live for you, to surrender ourselves to you again today. In Jesus' name we ask, amen. Woohoo! All right. would like to comment I am gonna wait here for a few moments because I love to hear what you have to say I have my plant-based shirt on today Ta -da. <laughs> um, yeah I also want to say to Marie it was so wonderful meeting you so ladies I had the opportunity to meet Marie a few days ago and she's lovely, but she's as funny and as smart as she is lovely. And she encouraged me to think differently just in the short time we were together. I really appreciate that, Marie, thank you. <laughs> You're probably going, what? <laughs> um, it's okay. Grateful for my sister who has been just blessing us with her prayers. And even in her recovery time now, she is helping me so much with um, rides for my kids. Just appreciate everything, everything, everything. Thank you so much, you guys. All right. Go out and be grateful. Bye. <laughs>